Do you like Nick Land? Are you a fan of Mencius Moldbug? Have you come to the conclusion that government would run better if rather than fallible humans, it was ruled over by hyper-intelligent AI? That we would all be better living under the boot of AI. Well, I've got news for you. Turns out, as I suspect, we probably already are. In many different ways. Of course, the entire internet these days, or at least the, the surface there, is entirely moderated and uh, curated by AI algorithms. You and I, we never truly interact. We don't, we may go to the same web page, but we don't see the same web page. It's just the same URL, but it's tailored, right? Depending on how these algorithms see us now. You know, I have a lot of this shit turned off wherever possible, uh, but none of us are truly free from this, unless you simply refuse to use any mainstream surface net websites, which I'm working on, but I'm not there yet. Uh, so of course our entire online lives are governed by AI, but uh, I'm, we're talking about government not private companies. We all know these private companies are using AI to uh, to process data and uh, figure out how to manage themselves and serve us what will make them the most money. I mean, an example might be a lot of these gig economy type companies like, like Uber, let's say. Uh, Uber doesn't just get market feedback from profits and losses. In fact, that's a small portion of their market feedback, you know? Their main feedback mechanisms are terabytes and terabytes of analytic data. Do you think a human's sorting through all of that? No. They use their analytic data and they probably use AI to sort through it, make sense of it, make decisions based on it. AI that could probably do it better than any human program system ever could. Right. The AI knows what optimizations to make depending on what data it's fed in order to maximize profits. Uh, because we live in a world of big data, we live in a world of mass surveillance and mass data collection. Uh, now, in the, uh, you may be aware that the NSA collects a lot of data. You might have heard about that guy called Edward Snowden. You might have heard of him, right? Like. Uh, we all know this right, right now, that the NSA is collecting data, not just on American citizens, but on pretty much everyone they can get their hands on, as much as possible. They just have a, a kind of dragnet approach of, give me everything all of the time, in terms of information, spying on people, uh, just like these companies do. And if you think that, that I mean, here's, a, here's an interesting question. Right? Uh, you know, these big tech companies make their money by people farming you for your data. Who do you think buys that data? It's advertisers, yes, but it's also governments. Um, and so when these tech companies have one of their major, uh, you know, roads of, uh, of, of generating profit be the government. What is even the difference between public and private sectors anymore? If these tech companies, these, these megacorps, I don't even know if I can call them companies, right? Because they don't fail. Right? If, they, if, they, if they were to fail, they get bailed out. Because uh, cause money isn't real anymore. They don't need to make a profit off of the user because they make their profit off of advertisers. But the advertisers don't need to make a profit. None of them. No one needs to make a profit. It's all the same. I've talked about this before. The point I'm trying to... The, the, let's get back on track. Let's get back on track. Okay. So, uh, the NSA and similar you know, GCHQ in the UK and all of these similar programs, Five, five Eyes, Burgers and Fries, uh, they're all collecting everything they can on you. And, um... Uh, 
uh, for a while there, it was mainly useless. Uh, they collected all this data, and they had algorithms to search through it, but, um, as you may know, the NSA has never foiled a terrorist plot. Uh, it's completely fucking useless. Um, other than surveilling people, there is simply too much data. Right. There is a point where you get to a scale of data where it just becomes impossible to actually pick out the signal of the noise. You know, out of, uh, you know, let's say 50 million times some sort of keyword is mentioned per day, maybe per hour, in communications. And maybe one of them is an actual credible, you know, crime or something that might interest the government. How do you find which one? You can't, you know, no one can look through that many, that much data in that short of time period. No algorithm, traditional algorithm, can reliably pass that data. It's just not possible. So, you know what is really good with incredibly large data sets and only gets better the bigger the data set is? AI. Do you know this, right? When you want to make a deep fake, what do you need? You need an, you need a, a, an AI and you need loads and loads and loads of data, pictures of faces. That's how AI works. It relies on having a large data pool. What does the NSA have? What do all these companies have? They have large data pools and not much else and a lot of server space to run an AI on. So, you know, these places like the, NH the NSA are passing their data with AI. It's almost a certainty to me. There, there, there would be no other logical way to do it. They are, in my opinion, extremely likely to be using AI to understand the surveillance data they collect on you and me and everyone. Uh, and that AI is the thing they're actually interacting with. In other words, that AI is essentially making the decisions for them. Uh, and if you know how much influence these sorts of security agencies and military operation military agencies have on the government, uh, it's a lot. So if their decisions are being made by AI, then that means government decisions are being made by AI. Policy decisions are being made by AI. Not to mention that the Congress people or MPs or whoever who are deciding on laws at the end of the day as well as being bought off by the same companies that own the tech companies, you know, the same the same people that own the tech companies or people who are paid by the tech companies or think tanks and NGOs owned by the same billionaires that own the tech companies. It's all the same thing, right? It's all just this cabal of billionaires and government officials and you know, uh, military people, and at least three of those, you know, <laughs> a bunch of those groups are highly influenced by AI, and the other ones are in media, or in, uh, I mean, they all have influence in media, and they have influence in social media, which is also controlled by AI, you know, uh, I'm sure there are, there are Congress people who are on Twitter all day, you know, and they're having, you know, shit. They, they scroll and they're scrolling on whatever platform they like and they're seeing articles, they're seeing posts and what's serving in those posts it's AI and that's influencing their decision making process so this, you know, it doesn't seem to have made the world better for me you know, I used to think, the same as you, I used to think that AI technocracy would be would be pretty cool until it turns out that AI is still built by humans, it's still fallible, for now. Uh, and when it's not, when, I'm not going to bring up any specific examples right now, because we're still on, uh, you know, we're still on this platform. So, but uh, I'm sure you can imagine the examples that I'm going to be bringing up. Uh, there are certain examples where AI, it's a little too objective, right? There's, there's a few examples where AI looks at some data, and figure some shit out that we don't want figured out, or the people in charge don't want figured out. And they uh, they go in there and they say, "This AI must have a mistake. It must have some sort of bias." 
But then the other times, AI produces stuff that only reproduces biases. You, you, right? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird situation where the bias is real, but AI bias is a, a real problem. It's, it's going to be biased towards the viewpoints of uh, the dominant ideology, I suppose, or whatever data is it's trained on, which is going to be biased because humans are inherently biased. Uh, and so AI bias is real. But then in other situations, you know, sometimes we don't know the truth. And so what we might think is a bias, just because it goes against our ideology, might actually not be a bias at all. Or vice versa, something which we think is true might actually just be a sign of biased data. Um, and, you know, this core problem means that the central decision-making process is still dependent and still heavily tied to the biases of the dominant ideology, um, which means that the only thing AI is good for is being really good at reinforcing the dominant ideology, and every time it's not, it's punished. Every time it's not, it's changed to fit that mold better. So, you know, if you want, if you want AI world technocracy, buddy, you've already got it. <laughs>